The Samba Web Administration tool needs to make sure that only authorized users are able to administer the Samba server, and it uses HTTP's built-in authentication mechanisms to do this. The vulnerable code had to do with how it handled HTTP basic authentication. When a client requests an HTTP resource that requires authentication, the server tells the client that it needs to authenticate using some method that the server is willing to accept. The client then has to respond with a valid authentication string, which in HTTP basic authentication is the word basic, followed by a colon, followed by a base64 encoded blob. When the server decodes that base64 encoded data, it should get back the plain text of a user ID password pair, which consists of the username as a string, followed by a colon, followed by the password as a string. But what happens if what you get back from the base64 blob is nothing at all? That's what happened in the Samba Web Administration tool. The code responsible for parsing the base64 encoded data into plain text had a bug in it. According to the specification of base64, there is no special encoding for a zero-length string. An empty string encoded into base64 is just the empty string. This implies that there shouldn't be any greater than zero length string in the base64 encoding that decodes to an empty string either. But with the base64 decoding routine that Samba was using, if you gave it a single equals character to decode, you got back a struct representing an empty string with zero length. So let's take a look at how this played out in practice in Samba 3.0.4. Packetstorm Security has a proof of concept Perl script that generates an HTTP request that crashed the parser and the SWAT tool with it. So you can see that this line is a, an HTTP basic authorization header. And you can see how the equal sign is masquerading as a valid base64 encoded credential. But it isn't, and so it crashes the parser. Seeing is believing, but reproducing the bug is better than believing. It's the scientific method. Samba 3.0.4 fails to build on a modern Debian, but an older environment in chroot can be used to build it. Thank you, Debian. You're a miracle of engineering. We built this old Debian environment previously, and we've already installed and compiled Samba 3.0.4 from source. You can do the same thing, and we have instructions for how you can do that, but we're going to skip straight to the exploit. SWAT, the Samba web admin tool, is configured to run under inetd. We'll bypass inetd and invoke it standalone so that we can watch what's happening at runtime more closely. First, we stop inetd. To start SWAT standalone, we'll use SOCAT. SOCAT is a Swiss Army knife of all things network. This will start SWAT when someone connects to port 901. Although it's better to start it under a syscall tracer. So now that's started, and from another shell, we'll launch the denial of service request. And observe the crash. So the stack trace goes to user slash local slash sambo slash bar slash log dot swat. And the crash looks like this. But it would help to be able to see what's happening in each of these stack frames. To look at this from a slightly different angle, let's run SWAT under a debugger and feed it the faulting input directly. Since SWAT is meant to be run behind inetd, its executable simply takes any input from standard input, so we can just send it input via standard in directly and bypass the inetd super server infrastructure. So we have here just the exact same packet that was sent via the Perl script with the exact same parser crashing authorization header. So let's try running this under GDB. And it crashes sig seg v segmentation fault. So let's have a look at the call stack. And note the frame for base64 decode in place. That crash is exactly where the CVE for this bug, CVE 2004 600, indicated it was going to take place. 
After this bug was reported, the authors made a change to prevent this behavior. Now, the code that uses the output of the Base64 decoder checks to see whether the length of the decoded user ID password field is greater than zero. And if you send SWAT a basic authentication header where the user ID password blob decodes to a zero length string, that check will fail and the server doesn't crash. But this actually means that this ancient bug from 2004 isn't really fixed. The Base64 parser is still returning a value that it shouldn't ever have returned in the first place, and we have no idea whether there are other inputs that it handles unpredictably, or whether its unpredictable handling might lead to other situations where an unchecked value causes the rest of the program to behave unreliably.